Think you know the Brooks Ghost? Think again. Introducing the all-new, better-than-ever Ghost 16. Now with nitrogen-infused cushioning for lightweight, supreme softness that feels good every step, every street, every single day. So go ahead, take your daily joyride in the all-new nitrogen-infused Ghost 16. It'll turn your everyday miles into everyday endorphins. Let's run there. Head to brooksrunning.com to learn more. Today on CityCast Houston, I've been playing pickleball now for a year and I'm seeing more new faces on the court now than ever before. After all, it is the fastest growing sport in the country and in case you want to pick it up this summer, I wanted to play back our interview with pickleball enthusiast Johnny Lee so you can get started and can go from beginner to pro in no time. It's Friday, July 5th. I'm Raheel Ramzanali and here's what Houston's talking about. Johnny, this is a long time coming because we've been meaning to do a pickleball episode for the longest time, and I'm glad we can get you on. How are you, first of all? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I, I am excited to talk all things about pickleball today. Yeah, you are all in like me. And before we jump into the conversation to talk about it all, anytime you mention it to somebody, is it an automatic invite from their end? Like they just invite themselves, right? Anytime you say you're playing pickleball? Yeah, it's like the new buzzword, right? So the moment you mention pickleball, your ears just perk up and you can just instantly have that conversation and just get right into it. And before you know it, it's like 20 minutes have passed by and you're still talking to them. I promise, man. Anytime I post a picture on Instagram, I get messages like, oh, I've been meeting to play. And that's why we're doing this episode. So more people can go play. It's a beginner's guide. But before we start about like how to get started, I think this is really important to talk about the culture around pickleball. And pickleball is more than just the sport, right? You've got the food, you're hanging out with your friends, you got the drinks. Tell me about this culture because this isn't like other sports where if you go play pickup basketball, for example, I'm not going to be eating and drinking while I'm playing on the court, right? There's this really cool, unique culture about the sport of pickleball. Absolutely. There is one thing about pickleball is that Everyone that's been playing pickleball, they come from usually like a tennis background. And in tennis, you don't really get a chance to socialize as much. Um, Usually you have to find certain groups of people that you play with. So what's really neat about pickleball is that now with all of these new facilities, you can really just find a place, meet up a bunch of people that you either know or maybe some strangers and like just get right into it. It was just really, really fun. Yeah. And those facilities have really good eats and drinks. So let's talk about some of those. What are your favorite places to go and some of the food items that you like eating at these facilities? Oh, absolutely. So a lot of these places, like for instance, that have been around for a while now, like Bumpy Pickle, Pickleball Social Club, Elite, PKL as well. Um, What's really neat about that is that, again, it's a more of a fun environment where you can have drinks, you can have bar foods, bite foods, and just really be able to hang out, have a good time, watch TVs, watch other sports. And and then the pickleball comes second. And the reason it works out so nicely with the food and the drinks and the atmosphere is it's not a singles sport. Like you can play singles pickleball, but it, it's not as much fun, in my opinion. Like playing doubles is fun. So you got to have four people. And as you mentioned, if you want to get a group, you try to get to eight people, right? So you have two games going or you can rotate. And that just invites this cool culture of eating, of relaxing with a lot of people. You're catching up with them, as you mentioned. And a lot of these places have a lot of shareable options, right? Of course, like it's pickleball. So any place that has a fried pickle, you've got to do it. Like chicken pickle, they have such a good fried pickle, by the way. Those are outstanding. And like it just works. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anytime you have amazing, really good foods, whether it's, uh, you know, French fries or burger bites. I mean, those are the best things to to really munch on as you're playing, you know, getting refueled and just hanging out and, and having a good time. So what's really neat is that it's just like the premise atmosphere where these games don't take very long. Um, you're in and out of these small games within the five to 10 minutes, and then you're able to really hang out and, and to catch up and to mix and mingle with everyone that's out there. And you don't have to run as much either, which is nice that so you're not throwing up your food, okay? <laughs> like, could you just imagine eating fried pickles and then going to play a game to 15 in basketball? Like, it would be a disaster. So it works out perfectly. All right, so for our listeners who are like, okay, sign me up. You've got food. You've got drinks. You've got good company. 
Now, tell me, how do I get started with this? Because it is overwhelming. A lot of people are playing. A lot of people are good. So you and I are just going to kind of go back and forth and give some tips on how to get started. You start us off. First, give me a basic explanation of the game. Yeah, the way that pickleball is played, it's almost like a mixture of tennis, ping pong, badminton, all of those you know sports. And what's really neat is that it's in a smaller space than a tennis court. So it's almost like you can fit two pickleball courts on one tennis court. And what's neat about it is that there are some nuances with the rules. There's a thing called the kitchen. So that's an area where it's called a non-volley zone where you're not allowed to be in the kitchen when you're hitting the ball out of the air. Um, But you can be right next to it, right in front of it, and it can really help with the gameplay as well. So with that, there's... Usually when you're playing doubles, there's two people on each team and you're taking turns serving the ball into the uh, to the opponents. And from there, when they hit it back, you have to let it bounce. And then it just becomes like a full on ping pong match uh, or a tennis match, as you will say. But um, it's really easy to learn. It just takes a few, I would say, trials to get used to it. Probably the best thing to do is to simply just go on YouTube and watch, you know, pickleball beginner rules and you can really get an idea of how to play and then as you're actually going through the experience that's the best way to learn is to learn with your friends learn with someone that's been playing with it for a while because they're going to be very patient with you pickleball culture is really great everyone understands that we all started from somewhere so you're going to be able to really get a good idea of how to play and once you pick it up i mean that's that's when it's over for you you're going to be hooked for life Yeah. And that's the best way to do it is find somebody that plays, right? And go out with them so they can kind of teach you. I would recommend doing that during the day. You can go on a Sunday or Saturday morning when it's not as crowded at some free courts and let them teach you understand the rules because the scoring is also a little bit different in how you say the score. The gameplay, if you have any kind of athletic background, and even if you don't, I think you can pick it up. It's a fun sport. It's easy in terms of picking it up. Now, as you get better, it does get harder. So I don't want to make it sound like it's an easy sport. But yeah, that that's the best way to do it is find somebody who plays, go out with them, take a couple of friends, learn, and then go play as much as you can. And here's the next part. Like, what do you take, right? Paddles. You need your paddles. You need pickleballs. And you can get starter kits on Amazon. I wouldn't recommend buying expensive paddles out the gate. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But if you go with somebody, they might have extra paddles already. You'll see you can find some cheap ones on Amazon. Buy those. Try it out. See if you like the sport. But where should they play, right? This is my next tip. If you're going to be going to a free court, probably don't go during rush hour, which would be between 6 to 8 p.m. And try to jump in and try to learn because... It's just too many people there. You won't get enough reps out the gate. So you can even go to a tennis court, honestly, and just hit over the tennis net and just kind of understand the sport a little bit. So, yes, the best time to go is not during rush hour because everyone is out there and they're wanting to play and get some really good games in. If you want to be able to practice, drill, as they call it, or uh, just get started, you want to go during off times when you have the court to yourself. You have friends that will have that patience to teach you and to really get you to learn all the nuances with the rules and the scoring. So that way you can really be prepared to that way when you go to these open plays or these other spots where you play, you can get right into it and have so much fun. Yeah, and what open play is, it's like pick a basketball, right? The best way to put it, you just go up there, you're gonna be playing with random people, you put your paddle on a stack, that's what it's called, and then like four at a time you guys go play. So that's what open play is, just to define it for our beginners. And a lot of the places that we mentioned to start the show, the Bumpy Pickles, the uh, PKL Elite, all these places, you can rent courts by the hour or just go in there and pay a fee. And most of the time you have a court available. So that's a great way to do it for people who are like, where do I go? And then also search your neighborhoods, right? Find pickleball courts. I wish I could give a place for every single person in every single neighborhood. That would be impossible to do. But a lot of community centers, a lot of parks are building pickleball courts. So there's probably one near you. You just don't know it. You just got to Google it. Yeah, that's very true. There are so many neighborhood courts that are converting over to pickleball. You can really um, look into places that offer not only um, temporary like pickleball courts where you can just you know, bring up your own net and then draw out the lines and then you're all set. A lot of indoor facilities are offering 
uh, pickleball open plays as well. So whether it's your own community centers, gyms, uh, there are apps out there that you can just easily uh, download and then you can find within your location. Something that I always like to do, especially when I travel now, I pretty much bring my pickleball paddle and I start looking up around areas and I just go straight there. So yeah, you can have open plays where you can just pay a certain fee and do it, or you have places that offer uh, free uh, outdoor or free community playing time. You just have to find the right people, which right now, being that it's the biggest growing sport, there will be plenty of people that will be out and about wanting to play with you. Houston's original neighborhood downtown is for everyone, and it's poppin'. It's our open-hearted home for our biggest celebrations and our treasured hidden gems. From the world-class theater district to incredible green spaces like Discovery Green, downtown is the place to be. In fact, more people visited downtown Houston last year than the entire population of Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, and San Antonio combined. There's no better time to live downtown than now. From starter apartments to luxury lofts, everyone can take advantage of the arts, business, culture, entertainment, food, and recreation. Now, you might think of downtown as only the heartbeat of Houston's regional economy, which it is, but there's so much more to it, including free events throughout the week with Downtown Houston Plus. From the summer trivia nights at Trebley Park to 713 Day at Market Square Park on July 13th, you can find something to do and eat and watch in Downtown Houston. Learn more at downtownhouston.com org downtown houston get energized and revived okay the other thing about getting started once you get better at this let's talk about injuries okay because there's always stories not only around the houston area but you see it nationally where pickleball injuries are on the rise let's talk about how to prevent injuries because i'm going to start this one i think you go in relaxed thinking oh it's just pickleball so you don't stretch you don't take the time to warm up like you would in other sports or exercises and you jump right into it. And as you do get better, it does get a little bit more intense. And I think a lot of the injuries happen because of that, because you just don't take it as seriously, which is part of the fun, but it's also the downfall when it comes to your health. Absolutely. So with any other sport and any time that you are going to do any physical activity, it's always best to be prepared. So whether it's having the proper uh, equipment, for instance, in this case, having proper shoes definitely helps out a lot. You don't want to be in like, for instance, like running shoes where your your feet might slide around. You want to have proper tennis shoes to where you have really great support, um, really great traction. Um, you also want to be able to wear great clothes that you can move around in uh, a lot easier without feeling really restricted. Um, another great thing right now, too, is to, you know, look into maybe wearing some uh, eyewear as well. So where there, there are certain goggles that you can wear to protect your eyes, because that's also probably one of the biggest injuries is that these pickleball, even though it's just a wiffle ball, the moment it makes contact with your eye, that could be lights out for, for a lot of people. I know. I haven't been hit in the eye just yet. But man, I as you get better and better, you're playing against players who are much stronger and faster. And that ball comes fast. But I don't want to scare people away. Look, this is for our beginners. And you'll see. You'll just kind of notice as you go along. Let's talk about paddles. Because when I first started, that was the most overwhelming thing for me. It was like, okay, these paddles are really expensive. Like these are $200, $300 paddles. But you don't have to get those expensive ones out the gate. What advice do you have for our beginners when it comes to paddles? Yeah, I think for, for paddles, it's really neat that you can definitely go to your local sporting goods store, whether it's academies, dicks, or even just going online to like amazon.com and really just looking at beginner paddles. They can range anywhere from about $20 to like $50. And that's an easy, a great place to start at price point wise to really just find something that can be able to hit the ball back and forth. Now, as you get better and as you want to compete a little bit more, there's going to be paddles in every single price range, ranging into the closer to right around 100 and 150, 200. And that's when you can really start to dive in and figure out what's going to work best for you for the skill level that you want to play at. But the great thing about pickleball is that it's a very low entry sport. You can really get in and get a really great paddle for about $30, $40 and start playing right away with all your friends. And also where you play, I've learned matters, right? Like the courts that I usually play at, it's a lot of wind. 
So my paddle has to have a lot of control when I'm hitting drives, when I'm dinking. Dinking is when you're right by the kitchen and you're just kind of lobbing the ball over the net softly into the kitchen. So your opponent doesn't get an aggressive shot back. That's what that means. But where you play a lot is going to determine what kind of paddle and also your game style, right? Like if you are a driver, that means you've got power, then you're probably going to want a driving paddle. So you'll see as you're around the sport, what other people have as well. And one of the cool things is, as you mentioned, the culture around pickleball is so much fun. People are willing to help. You can always ask somebody like, hey, can I see your paddle, like hit around with it? And everyone's cool with that. So that helps a lot too. The culture is what makes it so much fun. I've made so many friends. People are all about their paddles right now. You can customize your paddles. You can, again, test out different paddles from different people and really get an, a better sense of what's out there and to really figure out what's the, going to be the best paddle for you. When we think about styles, when it comes to the city of Houston, you've played at pretty much every court, I think. Is there a specific style that our city has when it comes to pickleball? What I love about Houston is that we definitely have a wide range um, of pickleball players. We have some really great like local pros. We have you know great coaches out there. So you can really get into what's going to work best for you. But what Houston is definitely has to offer is that we are literally building facilities left and right uh, everywhere you go. I mean, we are taking old buildings, old warehouses, and turning them into pickleball. Uh, places for us to play at so what you're going to find out is that in houston you can pretty much play at any time of the day so whether it's in the morning in the afternoon or even all the way till midnight there is going to be a place that's open for you compared to other places around the u.s where um, there's only a certain amount of uh, pickleball that you can do uh, throughout the day i'm glad you brought that up that you can play pretty much any time if you like a court that you go to as a beginner ask around if there are groups. There's a lot of WhatsApp groups at courts that people create. And let me just tell you, like on a weekend, if I have a couple of hours, I'll put in my pickleball group. Hey, I've got an hour right now. Anybody want to go? And sure enough, you get three players to respond and you've got a doubles game going for an hour and you can just play an hour straight. So ask around to join WhatsApp groups. That's a really important tip for beginners. My group me and my WhatsApp is just filled with like different groups of all different people. And what's really neat is that you will always find a time and a place that someone's willing to play. And as long as you're willing to make that drive, you will always have a good time. Oh, for sure. For sure. I can't even count the number of people whose last names are Pickleball in my contacts right now. <laughs> Everyone's last name is Pickleball. That is very true. Yeah. PB or Pickleball. That's that's all I know them as. Hey, do tennis players hate Pickleball players? Low key, yes. Ooh. I will speak from experience because I remember during COVID when tennis courts were in high demand because it was probably one of the only sports that you could play. I remember I looked over at one time and I was like, wow, who are these people with these weird paddles and this weird looking ball playing on our tennis courts? And I was like, this is the most ridiculous thing to ever step foot onto the tennis courts. And I remember I was like, I will never play this sport. And then a year and a half later, I end up getting offered to play uh, over in Phoenix. And before I knew it, I was hooked. So now I understand the hype. I understand why tennis players also don't like pickleball players because the other, probably the biggest thing is just the noise that hitting a uh, pickleball, it makes a lot of uh, echoing noise that most tennis players aren't a fan of. It's so funny. You and I were playing tennis a couple of years ago and you told me about pickleball. And I was like, please. I was like, tennis is a real athletic sport, okay? Like, uh, singles tennis is one of the hardest things you can do in sports, in my opinion. And I've played every sport. And sure enough, when I started playing pickleball, I was like, okay, this is so much easier on the body. This is a lot more fun, right? Because you're not as tense the whole time. Now, as I've started playing better competition, I do get a little bit more tense and you get in your head and all that stuff. But it is so much more fun, right? It's a little bit more relaxed too. So I feel you. I feel you. It's not a big deal. Uh, final tips, anything you want to throw out there for our beginners? Yeah, the best thing to do is just come with an open mind and to uh, really enjoy the sport for what it is. So you can really find yourself at all different levels. What's really neat about pickleball is that anyone that's, uh, as long as you have the right mindset, the right attitude, you're going to make a lot of great friends. People are always willing to play down, as in willing to play at your level, help you 
get to where you need to be as far as skill sets or just getting better strategy and learning how to hit balls better as well. So just know that in this sport, you're going to make a lot of great friends. You're going to be able to make a lot of great connections and you're always going to have a good time. I've seen people who have no athletic background show up to the courts. And again, I've been going for such a long time at these specific courts. And now in a span of like three months, they've gotten so good that they can play with most anybody there. So you'll get really good really fast if you are into it. So keep that in mind as well if you're a beginner. It doesn't take that long to get good enough to go play with random strangers, right? Like it's not just a, I'm going to keep into my foursome and that's it. Once you pick it up, it's fun to go play against different styles and competition. So stick at it, be with it. It's going to be a lot of fun and we'll see you out there. Johnny, thank you so much, man. This was a blast and I hope we see some of our listeners out on some of the courts. I look forward to it. I can't wait for us to get on the courts as well. So I hope you're ready to get pickled. That was Johnny Lee. You can find more resources about pickleball with the link in our show notes. That will do it for this week here on CityCast Houston. Our producers this week were Carly on Jones and Natalie Rivera. Our newsletter editor is Brooke Lewis. Laura Isensee is our executive producer, and I'm your host, Raheel Ramzanali. Our music is by the band All the Kimonos. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something new. Okay, why is it called pickleball, first of all? Pickleball actually came from one of the uh, family dogs. So the dog's name was Pickle, and that's where they came with the name Pickleball. That is so cool. That makes it even more fun that it's named after a dog.